Hi, welcome to another Lawn Fawn video. I'm Kara, and today we're going to journey into the world of make believe with some no line coloring. So, we're using Dream Big and the coordinating dies for that, and also the coordinating add ons. So, we're going to use the dragon. Now, I already made one dragon when the new release came out, and I thought I'd recreate that, maybe up my game a little bit. So, uh, on this one, I just put two pieces of cardstock together, and on the next one, I'm going to add magnets, so stay tuned. <laughs> well, I'm starting by stamping out my images, and I cut them out first, because a lot of times with no-line coloring, I get, uh, well, the nice thing is you can go outside the lines, but sometimes I can go outside too far that it doesn't line up as well with my die cuts and so I wanted to die cut it out first and so to stamp it up I'm using jellyfish ink and that's just been uh, a game changer for me for no line coloring to have Lawn Fawn's jellyfish ink because it really just kind of turns into whatever uh, I'm coloring so nice thing and I'm putting them inside the negative in order to keep them down and in the right position. All right, stamping is done. Clean that off, and it's time to start coloring. I'm coloring a lot slower than I'm showing you here. I sped this up to four times the speed of what I'm coloring, and I'm starting out with a G12 and G02. So I'm doing two colors together, the Gs and the Bs, so greens and blues. And the little guy over on the right there, he was blues and blue violets, which is a closer combination than the blues and greens. The The one in between would be the BGs, the blue greens. And so I'm not using any blue greens today. I'm going to let the blue and green mix together and uh, become its own blue green. <laughs> I'm adding in the B32 now. I really use only three shades of green and three shades of blue so with the green it's the G12 and the G02 and also G00 once in a while and then for the blues it's the B32, 34, and 37. I'm starting by just defining the area so I'm looking off to the left at the stamp package and I'm looking off to the right to the one that I've already done and trying to get just the shape of the head but I'm also shading at the same time because I'm putting these blues and greens together so starting with those greens then bringing in the blue for shading and then also trying to blend it into kind of going from a green to the blue, an ombre type of look there. And as he's getting defined, you can come back in with some green to blend that in. And then I'll start lower onto his arms, or I don't know, his, his legs, paws. <laughs> whatever, uh, with my lightest green again, and then I'll bring that up into a blue color. So here's my G02 uh, to darken that up, and I used a 02 instead of the next highest uh, G teen because it's a brighter color and I wanted some brightness, and really I'm not using the green too much to darken things. I'm relying on the blues more for that. So the G02 just helps to give me a little bit of a definition where it's mostly green, uh, but otherwise going in with those blues. Now I uh, saw the B37 and 34, and that's helping me really get <laughs> a definition between the head and the body there. And then I'll blend that out with the B32 down to that green. And at this point, it's just a matter of going back and forth, 
between the greens and the blues, trying to create a seamless blend. And really, at this point, it's a matter of layers. So I will go back and forth quite a bit. And also, there is quite a dark line there that I created with that B37. So I want to make sure that that blends out a little bit better here. So back in with that B34 and now the 32 to bring that down again. I'm happy with that blend now and I can come back with that B37 and add in some scales, some texture, just kind of the idea of scales. So just a few dots and then decided to get a little deeper into the shadows there around his horns and inside his ears. Get some more scales on with that B34. And I'll add some on with the G02 as well. And then the nice thing about the way Copics work is I can come back in with the G12 and blend those in so they, they become part of the body instead of just dots on top of the body. <laughs> so I thought I needed some more uh, dark ones <laughs> in there, so B37. And here is that G12 blending it all together now. As I'm blending them, I'm going to continue to add some roundness to the, to the face, blend in those dots there. And I forgot about that little spine up at the top, so I want to make sure to give a little shadow to the sides of that. And that G02 is up there brightening things up and just getting the blend the way I want it and rounding out that face a little bit more. And there's that G00. It is brighter than the G12, so just adds a little difference to the, the look of it. Now to start on the back side, and I am waiting on those horns and the spines and the wings until I'm all done because I wasn't sure what color to make those. So I'm just gonna hold off and start with defining those areas again, figuring out where they are. I actually put on my reading glasses for this. Sometimes that works better than my regular glasses when I'm doing detail work and I don't see the lines too closely, but it really does help to have that stamp image off, off to the side to help figure out where those lines are. And just getting in the shadows now of where I've been. Really trying to make sure that I can figure that out before I add on the next step. Because if I start coloring in, uh, well, for example, where that legs and the bottom of his torso are, if I don't ha add some shadow there, I could kind of miss that. I could kind of... Uh, just blend those together and they don't have the definition that I that I need. I finished up figuring out where those lines are under the wings and now I'm going to put in some shading and the shading again just really kind of helps to define the area before I move on and as I am moving on to the top of the body there and that's going to be blue coming down to green. His tail, too, is going to be mostly blue. So I'm finding those spines and trying to go around those. One of the nice things about no line coloring is if I go out of the lines a little bit, it's not a big deal. Or if the shape is not exact, that's fine, too. But I do like having that guide next to me so it can follow along. Uh, the jellyfish lines... I can see them. I know they don't show up so well on the video, but I, I can see them. So that helps too. Although, like I said, some uh, good reading glasses, <laughs> they really help. Now, because they are mythical creatures, they could be any color you want or any combination of colors. And I chose this blue and green today, but I was kind of thinking maybe pink and yellow would be would be a fun combination as well. Dragons are such interesting creatures too. I remember 
seeing Pete's Dragon in the theater when I was a kid, and I loved that movie. And I even had the color forms for that. Do you remember color forms where you, they were kind of plastic that would stick onto a little scene? Sort of like window clings nowadays. Uh, yeah, I loved those animated movies that were part animated and part real humans. Uh, like Mary Poppins or uh, The Incredible Mr. Limpet, because I guess because I felt like maybe it was true. Maybe we could get into the, <laughs> maybe we could really have relationships with these cartoon characters that we love. So anyway, little fantasy there, right? <laughs> but that's what dragons are all about. So I think dragons also were scary, obviously. I think they're supposed to be like smog in The Hobbit, things like that. But uh, I loved How to Train Your Dragon. Those dragons had such great personalities and they were all different shapes and colors. And that had to be just a fun project for those animators to work on. Well, that brings me back to our project. And I'm using this B37 now to really increase the the depth the shadows uh, underneath his wings and where his head meets the body and and this is what's really going to give me more uh, well obviously more contrast but more interest I think to this guy so if you look at the dragon on the right he doesn't have as much contrast as this one is, is getting. And I really think it makes a difference. That's one of the fun things about uh, coloring stamps because you can you can stamp them, I don't know, a hundred times, color them a hundred times, and you still have the stamp. You haven't, nothing's gone away. <laughs> so uh, why I like that is I can, I see the difference in how I color. And sometimes I don't, need as much contrast, but I think in this case, having that much depth really gives more uh, of an impact to this coloring, to this guy here. So uh, always, always learning, always growing, always uh, trying to get better at, at my coloring. And this is where I can see the difference between one image that I colored and another one. Well, now that we've worked through the majority of the shading, I'm not going to show every little thing anymore. So here are the spines getting put in and the little dots and then blending them in so that they're part of the body. And then I turned off the camera for a good long while <laughs> to decide what color to make his horns and wings and spines. And in the end, they turned out to be white. So using some cool grays to shade those. Now his friend over to the right has golden wings and horns and spines and that I chose because they were opposites on the color wheel, the yellow and the blue. But on this guy, I felt like because there was green and blue going on and a mixture of the two with the blue-green, that I didn't want to add in another color. So we we'll use the neutral gray. <laughs> The C4 was as dark as I went, and to get that quick contrast, I'm shading right with the C1, right up to that C4. So I'm taking out some of those in-between shades so it could go quickly from the dark to the light. I colored the front piece just the same way, and now I'm adding in some white dots for those scales show them glimmering in the sun, right? And not as visible, but I'm also putting it on the horns and the wings. And now it's time to start putting this bookmark together. I chose Blue Jay cardstock once he was all colored up. And the sentiment from the same stamp set that says, reading is so magical. I'm going to stamp that in clear ink and white heat emboss it. But I also want to put a sentiment on the back of the bookmark. So I'm figuring out how low that needs to be with his body. I'm putting some anti-static powder on the bookmark so that the embossing powder doesn't stick everywhere, just where I'm stamping. Stamp those down. And here's my white embossing powder from Lawn Fawn. And I just tap that on and take off the little bits that are extra. 
and I will melt that with my heat tool. And now you were probably wondering what I was going to do with this face. And I decided I was going to white heat emboss the face. And that's what I did with my original bookmark as well. So I'm stamping onto a full sticky post-it note. And I'm just going to cut the, a hole around uh, so that I can cover my dragon and just stamp his eyes and nostrils. So there, I cut those out and I'm deciding exactly where I want this stamp on him, putting some anti-static powder on and covering over the rest of my image so that I just get the eyes and the nostrils. And I'll stamp that a couple of times just to make sure that I have a nice impression. And the dragon himself is being held onto that grid paper with just a little bit of adhesive so that he's not going anywhere. All right, well now I can add some embossing powder to his face and I'll melt that with my heat tool. And then I wanna emphasize those features with some shading. So I'm using that G02 and I'll also use the B32 to give some shadow around them. And then I'm going to use my zero, the colorless blender, to erase any of the Copic marker that got onto the white embossing. And here I am using that B37 to do the same thing to the letters and taking it off with my colorless blender so that I have a nice clean look to it. I have some Mowed Lawn Distress ink and I'm ink blending that green onto the blue, kind of giving it that same green to blue look that I have with my dragon. And I'll do that on both of the bookmark sides and then buff that off with a little tissue. And there is a little score line there on the bookmark that I'm cutting open and just uh, making sure that I have some room there to slip my dragon down into the front. And then I'll add a little glue just to make sure that he's permanently adhered there <laughs> to, to the bookmark. And I'll glue on his backside. And I'm using two bookmarks here that I will adhere together. And that's what I did with my other dragon bookmark and that way it has a nice finish but this one I'm going to up the game a little bit and add some magnet inside so I cut magnet very thin magnet using the bookmark die and just cut it off at the I don't know the top of the rectangle so that it was just at the bottom and I'm adhering that with some double-sided tape on both of the bookmark sides and then I'm going to add some double-sided tape, but then I decided really I want to glue <laughs> this top so that uh, I have it sealed around the edges nicely. I'll pinch that together for a little bit, and then I want to add a finishing touch to this bookmark, a little bit of cord, and this is the Mermaid's Lagoon Sparkle Hemp Cord from Lan Fuan. Just snipped a little off, doubling it up and putting it through the center, and into itself and there it is there's that little tail for the bookmark and I have this old book it was my grandmother's it was uh book trails through the wilderness volume two I don't know what happened to volume one but you can see that my bookmark slips right on there and holds well together with the magnet and here's how it looks outside when it was in the book all ready to hold my place. I hope you enjoyed the video today and it inspired you to maybe try some no-line coloring or maybe make a fun bookmark for a friend. Well, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye!